Okay, we're together for the first ever Ring Sport Roundup Roundtable Talk. Um, I've got Linda, my wife Brittany, myself, Kevin, Kevin. Karen, and Elaine. Elaine Flower. There we go. <laughs> she looks at me all, all rough. Uh, so <laughs> we are just finished up dinner after day two of the Kevin Seminar here at Texas K-9. And uh, I want to thank everybody sitting down with us tonight to do this first episode. Um, kind of the outsider here, Elaine, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? No. <laughs> um, okay, I live <laughs> I live in Colorado on the western slope. I'm training a Malinois, four and a half year old Malinois now named Hey Joe. And um And that's Hey Joe. From not, the Jimi Hendrix. Not song. Pedro, which what I thought, we was, thought it was the Pedro. whole first seminar. Pedro. No. <laughs> hey Joe, where are you going with a gun in your hand? Yeah. Now you it's remember? your accent. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> like tree. Yeah, yeah tree. tree. One, two, tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, so. I, and I had uh, uh, another dog, Louie. Well, I still have Louie that did some ring sport and had a Schutz and three. And Kevin stuff. Kevin was telling me about that. Kevin, um, tell us about that dog a little bit. Uh, Louie, it's not, not just like telling you. You need to feel it, man. <laughs> I remember when I met her, you know, some years ago, I was so inspired because her dog, it stand out. Every decoy after working Louis will be like, man, he bites. Okay, who's next, Louis? Everybody's like, oh, not Louis. <coughs> he was the man, you know. Louis the man, really, really good dog. Slow, but oh, uh, bites. He serious. made afraid didn't bite him. Yep. Cause I never get bit from a shark, but I imagine that's what it would feel like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's, you know, I'm a newly certified decoy, and I have maybe worked fifth, twelve or fifteen dogs in trials, and probably double that through training and stuff and there are a few dogs in your career that just like when they get their teeth on you your soul <laughs> leaves you a little bit for a second <laughs> and then and then jumps back in and uh there's been a couple dogs that are like that to me and those are always a pleasure to work in a trial but they're they're just you don't come across them a whole lot now you, you, you know in monday ring the dog gotta bite for a few seconds I think the few seconds was too long, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah, I think every decoy right now, see this, will remember Louis. Just, yeah. just, just talk. And, his and that's now. the old one you got in your truck now. Oh yeah, yeah. he's like gray on the sides. He's like yeah. really gray. How old is he? Fourteen and a half. Fourteen and a half. How is Impressive. what's that in months? You don't keep up with that like they do in small well, children. He was, uh, <laughs> it was no. <laughs> you know, small. You know, people with small children are like, "How old your son? Uh, Seventy-two and three-quarter months." <laughs> and <I'm> like, what? <laughs> Yeah. So you've been doing this for quite a while. Um, I, I think I started about the same time Kevin did because he was my first decoy. First decoy. And well, um, actually, we did the brevet so with Chris Moody and somebody. But then I, he was my to get the one. And then last our last trial, we watched Hey Joe get yes. his two, yeah. uh, which was a really a pleasure to watch. Um, yeah. With a mm-hmm. dog that I've just squeaked by and got my level one not too long ago and working on level two. Um, if someone's watching that's not familiar with dog sports, um, it's kind of hard to talk about how much commitment it takes to get to a dog to that level. Not only money, but uh, time and friendships and all the, all the good stuff that comes with the, with the bad too. And uh, hey, Joe, work, hey, Joe, not Pedro, no. <laughs> worked work through that. And he went down the next weekend and got it. Another leg yeah. in it, it ends. Yeah, he had a little problems, but he did okay. Did he pass down there? Yeah. Okay, well, good. Yeah. And then this week, these two days, we've seen you work on some level three stuff yeah. and cleaning up some more level two. So you plan to go to uh, work level three with him? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you drive all over. You might as I well. I know. <laughs> might as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, just next down the list, Karen, introdu- introduce yourself a little bit. I'm Karen Shivers. I moved to Texas several years ago and... Um, I didn't know anything about Mondia Ring, and I was at a training for police dogs. And they said, hey, why don't you stay the weekend? They, they're having this thing called a Mondia Ring trial. And I went, what? What's that? Well, you have to stay and watch. So I stayed and watched, and I had not picked a dog yet to work um, detection work with. And I was trying to look at all the working dogs that might be available. And they had a German Shepherd kennel, and I was like, nah, it's whatever. I'm still looking. And uh, so I... A lot of people that I know now were actually at that trial, and I saw the escort um, with the dog between their legs, and it was a Malinois, and I went, I want that dog like that, and I want to do this. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. I didn't know anything about Malinois. 
I came back and I had to get a Malinois. I got a Malinois, started a Mondia Ring Club, and the rest is history. Um, unfortunately, part of that history, I got sucked in by the <laughs> yeah. black by the black hole of Mondio Ring. <laughs> oh yeah, I I've gotten sucked into this toilet bowl of uh, desperation that is uh, dog sport. It's just it's one of those things mm-hmm. where. Um, you meet so many great people in it, and then you build such a connection with your dog, and then you get all these cool toys like vans and right. junk like that. <laughs> drones. Yeah, drones and cameras and all that stuff. Well, which that, a lot of that's not necessary. You're in your second 12 steps. Sec- uh, yeah. Second 12 steps of money. So I think uh, probably my first weekend... Uh, Ann P was there, and she told me about the twelve steps of audio ring. Yep. And those are—I've never seen them etched mm. in stone. I'm sure she has this iron tablet somewhere that's <laughs> been forged into yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, they're different depending on what you're doing. Each, so each one, yeah. You can you can jump steps when you become a decoy. That's like a lot of steps. Lots right? of steps. That's a yeah. Lot of steps. I remember, and uh, maybe Linda, were you there when I said I wasn't very competitive? And now I've bought a house based around my dogs. I've bought <laughs> vehicles based around my dogs. I've traveled. Most of across the state of Texas, we all knew better when he compete. said that. Yeah, that's yeah. it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's the the toilet bowl of doom has started for me, and we've actually, you know, wife have gotten another dog and all of that. Well, next in line is Kevin, which everyone's already met my. My, my darker brother here. Uh, <laughs> there, and if you haven't seen the, the interview with Kevin, we've got two decoy uh, interviews up so far, Kevin and Chad Bowerly. And Kevin gives a lot of his bio, so we won't, we won't waste too many minutes on that. Uh, and then to my right here, we have my wife, Brittany. She has uh, just uh, about a one, little over one-year-old yeah. uh, Malinois named Cal. Uh, introduce yourself to anyone. Dude. You, you already introduced me. Well, you go ahead. Cool. I'm Brittany, his wife. Talking to your mic. <laughs> and it's their anniversary, and this oh, is what yeah. they're doing. Yes. See, dogs, right? Dogs. Dog sports. Everything dogs revolves again. around dogs. Yes, we just <laughs> bought a van yesterday for the dogs. Um, got a new house. New house. Kind of for, for the dogs. Yeah, yeah, pretty much for the dogs. Uh, yeah, my first Malinois, well, first working Malinois, he's a year and a half now, almost a year and a half. Yeah, um, yeah it changes your life. <laughs> yeah. You think kids are hard. Mm-mm. I can vouch for it. I got get one. a Malinois. It'll be fun. They see. I, ah. I I completely disagree. I would take a new dog all day long. Mm-hmm. You you could beat a dog behind closed doors, you and he doesn't tell dogs. his daycare teacher. <laughs> we do not beat our dogs. We do not. But we do crate them. Or our child. But yeah, we do crate our dogs. And a lot of a lot of yeah. pet people don't understand the destructiveness of a high drive dog mm-hmm. that's been that's training all week, and then you just a take whole that other away. Podcast, right? mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm I'm really new to it still. Um, still learning. Got a lot of kinks to work out, but these guys are You're a lot more really experienced good, than I am. But I'm trying. I'm trying to get, dive in. But yep, and she does a lot a more. Dog. She does a lot more with her dog than just uh, Mondia Ring. She's got a dog diving title, and the dog's still young, so yeah. he's still getting. We're uh, just having fun. Showing a lot of yeah. stuff. We're yeah, having fun. I think uh, you know when you work Britney dog. What's his name? Cal. Superman. Superman. <laughs> Cal L. I, I know I know I know decoy is gonna love that dog. Really? Yeah, they, he's I gonna be so. a decoy choice. So in the letter there's Cal and there's Karen has one also. Striker. Striker. Two special dogs, I think, you know. Yeah. They're brothers. They're decoy. brothers. Yeah. yeah decoys Same watch out, they're coming. Yeah, yeah. the name again. Mm-hmm. Striker and yeah. Cal. Superman. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. His, and yeah. his registered name is Strike Force, that's why. Oh my god. Strike Force. Oh, Magnum and Striker. That's cool. So next down the list here is Linda Black. Uh, She travels up from Dallas somewhere to train. So introduce yourself a little bit. So I'm Linda Black. I'm a crossover from Agility that I've done for 20 years. Decided to get a Malinois because they're more athletic and fast in Agility. And then decided (laughs) to do Mondio Ring. Not my best choice in life. (laughs) 22-month-old Malinois has been a little bit life-altering for me. And I have been buying houses and cars for dogs for... 20 years mm. we're, you guys we're are slowly young. catching up yeah. very young <laughs> very young in that have you seen my aluminum crates yeah. yeah so i want to ask you something and this i thought about this a couple of days ago especially when she was talking about agility dogs and border collies it seems like border collies dominate the sport of agility or is that correct border collies dominate a lot of sports so you said you bought a malinois because they're more, faster and more agile is it just statistically mo- less people own malinois in that sport is why 
The border collie is more uh the more So border, f- border collies are very athletic. They're very fast. I would never in my ever own a border collie cuz they're crazy. <laughs> So I come from working line German Shepherds, which is what I've had for 20 years. So comparing an 80 pound dog to my current dog's 21 inches tall and 47 pounds and fast twitch. Pocket sized. Yeah. Pocket rocket. Yeah. She's awesome. She would yeah. be an awesome agility dog too. If we ever learn anything in Mondio ring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I watch agility when it's on TV and it's mostly um, dominated by the longer hair dogs, which I guess are collies that I watch flowing around. The deal, and I was wondering. I don't if, think hair actually has a lot to do with it. Well, that's all I see. I mean, I don't understand. <laughs> so all you see is they if run you by. grease them down a bit, they go a little yeah. bit faster over the bar. The ramps have colors, and there's a different color they have to touch before they can yes. Yes. something like it's that. Very that, important. That's what I know. It's very important. My shepherds yeah. do not like that yellow zone at all. It's probably good for colorblind dogs. <laughs> exactly. So. Three of the people sitting here, Karen, Linda, and Brittany, all have a dog that's somewhat similar in experience. And there's a couple of people, Danica and Marky, that's not here. And these girls kind of have a kind of a, a gentleman's bet on getting their ones maybe later this year. I we th- do. Well, you know, we've yes, we kind of ribbed, we kind of yeah. ribbed about we it. We just we're decided try. that apparently this evening. Yeah, yeah right now. Well, we, we talked about it we last time. We talked about it last time. Um, I think looking at y'all's three dogs, um, your dog, like you say, fast twitch is just like her brains, just she's a little frightening, <laughs> scary smart. Yeah, it's like a drag drag car on the line, just ready to go at any at second. every moment. Yeah, every and, breath. And Brittany is um, not quite in the same position, but her dog had some big hurdles. She had as many hurdles as the dog because of her nerves, but. I don't know anything about if, that. Ooh, just saying. If uh, <laughs> I believe Kevin's taken my dog away from me on many, many occasions. Multiple yeah. occasions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Many. Watch it. So last seminar, which was when? How long ago? December? December. December until now. It's, y'all three dogs have come a long way in that time, even though we've event, uh, essentially lived out of boats here for the last yeah. three months. <laughs> Late and learning is a thing. Boats. Yeah. Kevin, what do you think, what do you see in these three dogs that we're training right now that might get us red trial ready to December? So I think uh, Linda, you're ready. Oh, the dog is ready. Linda, maybe not so much. I'm going to give so her some alcohol and she'll be ready. Whiskey, <laughs> whiskey and the hey. coffee. Yeah. So Linda dog is a really, really smart dog, you know, and just like, like we said, the Malino didn't know how to work. And she knows how to get away where she and get what she needs. So she figured out Linda. She got Linda buttons. She <laughs> loves Kevin. Linda bu- <laughs> Linda Who doesn't love Kevin? <laughs> uh, the Doberman. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That thing is crazy. Oh shit. Loves Chase. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah Love Chase. I don't know what it is, but all the dogs just kind of turned on to me today. That's good. For some reason. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um. So. Must be the beard. I didn't get to see much of Cowart or. Striker work. Yeah, yeah. How did Striker do today? Yeah, Striker did really good. Uh, he did some defense and some sense. It's send away? Good. Yeah, send away. And, and then we up the ante on the defense, which was he, better. He did very well better. today. He did um, He did whistle offs today. Yeah, I saw that. Some, that was yeah. a good. new one. And good he stuff. did really good with that. And I said, how, his outs are really good. Yeah, outs. Very good outs. I think these three dogs um, that we're specifically talking about here, um, since I've got the uh, van and some more equipment that we can make training as a group together, we're gonna do a it. little yes. more efficient. Amen. I, I think the dogs are really. It, Get out it's of your so backyard. weird. It's so weird. One or it's it's tough for beginner people to s- come to seminars and move so slow with a puppy for like the first eight months, and then it's just like you pull the joystick back on a fighter jet, and it's just whoosh, so much progress so fast because yeah. it takes so long to build those baby steps of. Turn your head the right way and bite, and don't act stupid, yeah. and all of those things. And so the main thing to me is, you know, once once you do it right, you, we know how to fix it, you yeah. know, and we could always be shooting forward. Yeah, you know, if if you're yeah. constantly having to just step backwards and kill time, you're just yeah, you're just wasting everyone's time. But you know, you know like I worked Brittany dog today, and the outs was good. We took we time. We start from the bottom, little defense with the with the um with the pillow. That was good. Then we put him on the um. Uh, Put him on the legs on the suit. Really, really good. 
I think she needs to cut his teeth though. It's like really long. His I think he's a, I teeth think teeth he's a vampire. <laughs> I see. I see when he gets tired, no he pulls his, jaw, his oh. cheeks out. They just hang down. Yeah, I thought it was a they vampire. Have a, you got a tool? Do you have We're a tool to cut him? his teeth. We're not cutting his teeth. Uh, We're not filing his teeth. <laughs> just to see the botchy yeah. more. So they'll, I have a they'll diamond blade. <laughs> just wear it no. down. Maybe we can get some pimp gold teeth like Elaine's dog has. Yeah. So Elaine, how long have you been doing Mania Ring? Um, good question. Um, I think since 2007 or 8. Yeah. After, I mean, um, I got <clears throat> my IPO3 on Louie, and then nobody was doing much of anything. And so we just worked with some cops and did some stuff. Then we started, um, more people started doing Mondio. So then I had that. And he liked it a lot better than Chudson. So. You're probably out of all of us been competing in dog sports, probably uh, oh, bat yeah. sports longer than bat anyone sports, here at the, yeah, yeah. bat sports here. How has how do have you seen as has it changed over the years? I mean, you're talking to someone me mm-hmm. that just uh, in the last two years trained the first dog ever. She's working on her first dog ever right now. Well, I think it's gotten more competitive and and definitely a lot to more complicated because <clears throat> early on a lot of the dogs were crossovers you know people were taking their shits and three dogs right into um mondial and you know most of the people that started the sport you know um and charlie augusta and and they they're still involved in it but there's now so many more people um and many of the people now own their own training, dog training businesses, and they have multiple dogs. So you see uh, a lot more competition, you know, and people understand the sport, and it's progressed a lot. I think um, when they used to go to the Worlds, they, uh, you know, a few years ago they did exceptionally well, the U.S. team did, and they've, they've learned to uh, pick up, the way of training that came there. So it's a lot harder than probably it was before. Yeah, I know Ann was talking about that uh, the f- two or three years ago, they were on the podium at, at yes. Worlds. Uh-huh. And, and she said them. she said someone came up to her that she had you know, been friends with internationally for a long time and congratulated her, like kind of congratulating the team, saying, you know, you finally made it. Yeah. And Mania Ring is only, we have a board member here, um, how many members do you know about? About almost three hundred. Yes. Getting yes. close. Getting close to three hundred. Yes. Um, and it's kind of it's been a pretty slow growth mm-hmm. as long as it's been around. But I hope some um, some uh, some of this type media coverage and getting the word out there. I know some people are hesitant for this type of stuff, but as long as it's done correctly with the with the right mindset and you know to progress the sport, I think it's going to be a great thing. And there's been some situations over the last year that I've heard about inside trials that there's not been a lot of, in, in the grand scheme of things, there's not been a lot of dogs competing inside the U.S. Judges don't get as much experience as some right. overseas. Having this video stuff could, could be good documentation to figure out, oh, this weird, this weird thing happened in a trial. We can go back and look at it and learn from it and have... Uh, other judge watch it and decoys, you know, constantly working new scenarios mm-hmm. and new defenses and stuff like that. Um, the media part of it is something that seems like it's been left out of it a little bit. And I hope this can really help the sport grow because there's got to be someone that's watching this. It's like, what is dog sport? Or, you know, it's afraid to come out to a, to a club the first time or whatever. And I hear it. I know it. Yeah. Well, it's scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Running scary. around. It's complicated. Don't be scared. It's fine. Yeah. Very scary. Mean people. It's not scary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mean people. <laughs> yeah. We're a family. It takes a village. Yeah. We're a family of mean people. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I think that's people. true about Texans. I, I, I can see that. <laughs> the village people. Good one, in it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, you know, you, you at least be, three of us. Three of true. us. Yeah. Three of to us. start yeah. the sport, though, you don't. You don't. You can get involved in it in just the obedience end. There's a lot of people that just want to train their dog too. and just really want to um, get out there and have more fun and do a lot of different things instead of just the regular routine of obedience and. We have a Mondia Ring Obedience only portion of this that mm-hmm. allows you to come and play and just experience the bite sport, but you don't have to be a part of it. You can, And the obedience is very challenging, and it's, it's fun. So we have that opportunity for everybody that wants to come play. 
Well, in the last 12 months, there's been huge changes in the sport on, to, yes. to make it more accessible to not only Malinois, right. essentially. Um, oh, yeah. Obedience only, and then small dog obedience. So we've changed the yes. scale of how jumps, width jumps, and per the dog size, how big the obstacles are and stuff like that. And then what are some of the stuff USMRI is doing uh, with... Given back to uh, so if you trial, you get your name in a in a pot basically. So every time you trial, you get your name in, and twice a year we draw out um, names and they get a hundred dollars just if they win to go to the trial. So we're trying to promote going to more trials. So the more you go, the more entries you get in, and the more chance you get to win a hundred bucks. Um, so yeah, we. We had some very happy people last year. When we did well, that. They yeah, went, what do you mean we get $100? Cool. Right. Chase, why don't you mention you just recently became certified as a decoy, and that and you've done really well in a short time. Why don't you mention a little <laughs> about your uh, uh, road to that? Um, I've got a bigger video coming out, but I'll touch on it a little bit. Um, about three years ago, I guess I met Kevin and Karen and was like, oh, God. <laughs> Because he got a really nice puppy. Yeah, got a, I got a nice puppy. And then um, I was fortunate enough to meet Kevin as my, one of my first decoys. And he really, I guess, took to me, I guess you could say, and uh, taught me a lot. And I'm a pretty athletic guy. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm not in real good shape. I got a little bit of a belly, but I can get around. And when I put my mind to something, no looking back. It's just, if I say I'm going to go do that, that's what's going to happen. And uh, it's true. I uh, started training a puppy and then I come from a big competitive shooting background. So mm -hmm. I was a, a safety officer and then ran trials and an officer to at, at big, bigger matches. And I'm one of the guys that more I can understand the decoy side, the better I can prepare my dog sure. for the competition side of it. Cause if I understand what the decoy can do to my dog, then I understand better how to, right. how to offset that. And uh, it's also just a pleasure to work younger dogs and um it seems like to me if we're just two competitors at a seminar we might not connect like mm -hmm. we do as a decoy worth with a, mm -hmm. uh, i'm being a decoy and you having a dog there because you've got to trust me to send your right. dog that's got gold teeth literally <laughs> all the way down the field and risk breaking one of them uh and it's it wasn't even so i think it's more of a family thing to me I've met so many great people yeah, so over it's the. A family. It's I've met so many people that I I have friends that I don't call all the time, but I message you on Facebook mm -hmm. more than I do yeah. people I went to high school with. Yeah, because I, I, it's like we said, it's uh, it's some type of family bond that uh, that's hard to <clears throat> hard to recreate. I guess because sometimes it's, it's so much. It's a lot of work, and it's a lot of it's so much dedication, and we all know how much work it is and we all help each other because we know that and so we become close just because we know how much work we had to put in to get there and we want to support each other so you can't help it yeah and every somewhere someone's got to have a field that's got way too much grass on it thanks karen mm -hmm. yeah it's got to be mowed and everyone's got to travel and get around and feed and hold tugs and hide send away objects and all this stuff just to get the dog to run in run in a straight line build it and they will come yeah yes that field was has a, was a labor of love for sure so it looks really have nice to have now. one of those I awesome. said. <laughs> yeah it's a it's a it's a nice facility um not saying that anywhere else that i've been is not nice but every every field's a little unique like in ann's in san antonio it's hilly and rocky and um, got some trees and trees, yeah, trees in the one, middle. One, two trees of them. Trees. trees. trees How many? Tree trees. <laughs> There's tree, tree trees. trees. Yeah, and then <laughs> I've been up to uh, Brad's at Red Dirt Ringers, and uh, his his is uh, an odd shaped field, but it seems like every club. No trees. No. No, there's no trees. On <laughs> there. There's, there's no tree only trees around the side. Yeah. <laughs> there's trees. Um, every every club <laughs> finds a way to make it happen, and uh, I'll be going up to Kevin's in June to to learn a little bit up there i'll be seeing whatever he's got there's so, lots of trees he's got lots of, lots of trees, <laughs> lots of trees. <laughs> he's, he's got trees <laughs> more than tree he's got tree no one trees. 30 he's tree got, trees he's got 30 tree trees he may have oh 330 we love you kevin trees. no one understands why we're about this they're picking them you guys they'll yeah. figure it out kevin's from trinidad and sometimes we have a difficult time understanding him so when we tease him it's all because we love him but sometimes <laughs> i go what 
<laughs> and then he what? says it in and I go, what? Like, sorry, what? I'm I'm really sorry. I'm not done. I think my I, ears tuned in to Kevin yeah. over yeah. I mean, the first has, couple of seminar. I was like, <laughs> what? He's really <laughs> <laughs> he's really difficult so, to talk to so, on the phone, though. Okay? Can you write that down? Th- oh, yeah. I think like one, one day um, we were doing an absent or a stay. And I said, um, oh. let's do a long down. <laughs> and I'm like, a long down? What's a long down? Long dong. It's like, what's a long dong? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness these people <laughs> yeah i imagine um so we are just on the cusp of nationals in uh, mid-april it's when that's gonna happen yep uh 12 uh, 13 and 14 so we'll be going down to ends i think the first weekend me and you will we'll be uh yeah. running a decoy start down there yep. for a couple of guys and training down there and then y'all will be leaving Straight away for nationals, Straight right? Straight for nationals, yep. In what? California. Yeah. Who, are you, who are you taking to nationals? Uh, taking an uh, extra. We're going to just have fun. So uh. um, <laughs> who else Lisa is going to be on the podium there. with you? Oh, uh, Michael Ellis, Lisa, Lisa Lucero, and Brad. Brad's, Brad's taking there. Lonzo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's going to be a real tough, it's going to be tough, man, you know. It's just so far away yeah, where I would go. Yeah. For my first one, I think I want it to be a little closer. 2020, surely it's not going to be on the West Coast and... Yeah. And oh, yeah. yeah, who knows? I ain't been Texas talking. canine. I can't remember who put the bed. Yeah, Could you, you know. imagine having to park like fifty cars at her place and it 50, being yeah, being yeah. It'd be okay or, if it didn't rain. Yeah, yeah. be fine. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we this do next have year. noise stadium though. Yeah, right. I, I think this that. is going to be a, like yeah. a really really competitive uh, mm-hmm. nationals. It's going to be one of the I think one of the mm-hmm. most competitive because. Does a lot of good trainers is going to be a lot of good trainers. people in California that yeah. have Monday ring. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and then uh, was in December to make uh, some really good scores in California, really really right. good scores. So, so something that I've good. noticed, and this will be a good subject to talk about. Um, I don't, I'm not taking point. I don't ever. I don't want to come across that I'm taking points away from anybody, but I see some inconsistencies and in trials across the oh, nation. Yeah. Um, some judges are way harder, and and yeah. fields are set up to make things more difficult. A sport that I competed in for years and years and years started really small, and they built what's called a Tiger Team, which is, I don't know what it stands for, T-I-G-E-R, but it's a continuing education so they can make sure every trial or competition in Southern California, Northern New York, Washington, or Florida, and everywhere in between was consistent. And that's something that really, hard. really, really, really hard, hard to do. Um, but as the sport grows, it won- if there's 300 members right now, what are we going to do when there's 3,000 members? Yeah. That's yeah, going to be bigger. Yeah, but we had to think about sometimes the people going to stay club level. Yep. Mm-hmm. We got to do that. And some people want to go international level. Yeah. So we got to also and, think of that. And that's that's totally mm-hmm. fine to take it into account. But um, I see a lot of conditional training is the, what I like to call it. Yeah. You know, the only my dog only does good if, 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 if. And I see a lot of people talking about uh, <coughs> decoys or the judge being unfair or the Facebook <laughs> group oh, being let's too, not go there. Facebook being too grumpy. <laughs> but I think if people spend as much time talking about those other things and just went outside and trained their dog, every dog would be stronger. Yeah, you know, yeah. at the end of train, it, train don't complain. Train, train don't complain. That's right. Uh, yep. <laughs> I think well, I, th- I think one thing about the Mondio is that there's so many different scenarios that what. A lot of people do, and people are really good. They've just exposed their dog to so many different things. But it seems like at nationals and stuff, they always pull something out that no, none of the dogs have ever seen before. Yeah. And um, But that's pretty much how people train, I think, is that they show their dogs just every different... But I don't think they really do. If you look at the, the pattern of even in our, in, in our club, if you just look at the field... You can see dents in the ground where yeah. we work the same, the spot same spot every single time. The send away position is just worn to death. And it wouldn't be nothing just to flip it around. But it's just hot. It's 155 degrees in summer. Yeah. And Jesus is literally trying to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so you You're just train anything. you just train where the shade is. But that's that's a big drawback to when um I, But I think some people Okay, some people don't have that aspiration, so they, mm-hmm. they want a, a dog, they want to train the dog, they want to get a title, they want to experience it, and then they might have a dog that, that would be that would want to go further with, and they'll, yep. they'll start traveling with it, mm-hmm. they'll start traveling with it, mm-hmm. and then they'll start doing other things with it and going other places, and so that is available, and 
my field might be the same for this, but it's not the same for her that comes mm -hmm. or her that mm -hmm. comes. So it's it's different for other dogs too. So when you start traveling to these other places, the dogs start getting exposure and it's okay. So yeah, we, we don't move a lot of things because you need a tractor to move some of it. So it just stays there sometimes. Yeah, and I've seen over the last two years that I've been involved in your club, we've made blinds just easier physically to move. We've made the obstacle to jump over easier to maintain. Um, and one of the bigger things that helps us, God, my voice is squeaked. The, one of the bigger things that we've done is we've got kind of a core group of people mm -hmm. that I'm not, to, I'm not afraid to say, Linda, grab that stick and go move it over there. But it, we've, every week it's someone new. You're kind of hesitant to ask mm -hmm. them to hop in, you know. Um, so, but back to the consistency thing, and I want to – I think Kevin was down there. I want you to tell your story mm -hmm. about your defensive handler minus three points on what happened. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, um, this was at Ann's. And it was a pretty hard defensive handler. It started out kind of complicated, and then let's see, somebody made a bunch of noise in a in the blind. That yeah. was one thing, but didn't show themselves. And then it was a um, we went over to this area where we we're supposed to be putting out fires with shovels. Bang, 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 bang. And then uh, I know when the dog and white was done, one of the people asked because you're supposed to back up if we should put a a line or something so that the handler knew where to back up to and they didn't want to do that <laughs> but you try to back up straight and your dog's pushing you and you don't know where you are and you can't turn around and look and and basically I wasn't straight I was kind of on an angle and I didn't really know it I mean and you know you just lose some points that way I didn't really know how to compensate for that you know I mean I, I wasn't I, I thought I was going straight but you just well, can't tell. <clears throat> that's that's one of the instances where I talk about consist or yeah. mention consistency. Kevin, you were there. Um, so not being able to look backwards, that's fine. But gosh, you got safety involved. You got elderly women walking around the field <laughs> like with, me. With, <laughs> with nice, no. that's nice, Chase. Way to go. <laughs> with with, with a dog who wants to bite a guy, and you you take a, you take away the ability to look backwards to. You know, make sure you're doing okay. You won't give a visual uh, cue on the ground on on the position you're supposed to. Well, I know in the trials that we've done, um, especially for like the weather hit was supposed to happen. Sometimes they'll even put an X on the ground um, if it's around some obstacles and stuff that to make every person stand here. Yeah. Stand yeah. here, you yeah. know. And I think that's one of the consistent things. So, that, so to me, to me, like um, looking from a competitor side, when we look at a dog in white, and I'm competing against you guys. Mm -hmm. And you didn't ask question to the judge. Mm -hmm. it, it makes it better for me because I, I know how way. I'm gonna get it wrong with yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? But if you ask question and the judge set it in stone, then it had to be in stone. Yeah. But some things, I mean, it, well, learning from Josh when we were there, yeah. um, once he set a pattern, you have mm. to follow it. If right. you, if you change it, right there you right. lose a point. I say pick up this, and you didn't pick it up, you lose a point. Right. I say hold it with your two hand. You didn't hold it with your two hand. You lose a point. So you guys had to think about that in a right. competitive way, you know. Yes, the line probably was there and you had to back up. However, but you had enough time to leave the field and think about how, how you're going to gonna it. do it. Yeah. So we're not going to beat up the judge. No, no. It's just... It's now like we're beating them up. We're just yeah. talking. But if, the, if they took points away because she walked too much diagonal, if he wanted her to be in a spot, there should have been a spot that was defined. Why, why is that? Well, if I tell you to put this blindfold on, run across the yard, and do it perfectly on this line, but, you're going to struggle. But, but let's stop. To, let's go back to what I said. If you didn't ask a question, but they did. You, the, you the, had they it. did. The guy she said, said, "Ask for a line or yeah. some type I, of visual I, cue." The guy said, um, "Don't you think we you should?" The, the doing yeah. the dog and white. He says, "Don't you think we should put a line there?" And he said, "He said no." Okay. But then still well, so then what's straight? Maybe I was straight because I wasn't off the line because there was no line. Yeah, but, but still we had to figure out <laughs> right. how we going to. You're absolutely so, right. so this is one make it better for me competing yeah. against you. Yeah. If you didn't go and figure it out. Yeah. Not just. The I didn't line. think it was going to be that difficult to back up straight. Yeah, but but, but, but it's <laughs> not yeah. just it's not just the line. It's, yeah. it's in every scenario. Yeah. Right. I mean, you were there when I competed with extra, and they set up the scenario, and I didn't just walk off the field. I think about how I'm going to approach it. I think yeah. how I'm going to go sit down. I think how, how the hit's going to be. Right. You know, I, I think about all these things. For me, as a competitor, 
if you didn't leave there and think about it, it's better for me. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't think gonna it was going to be butt. that difficult. Ex exactly. I d it just didn't seem that hard to walk backwards. Yeah, but, but now but you know. A lot of people, a yeah. lot of people get nervous. Right. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people get nervous. Like we had a scenario one time where the decoy is standing there. We had was to go to our table, turn around, and then the decoy is going to hit. Right? What everybody do? Everybody walk up to the table and turn around. And the decoy is right there and hit. And everybody missed the hit. What did I do? I walked straight up to the decoy, back up, then turn around, and then he hit. Yeah. The judge didn't say I couldn't do that. So that one made it fair. Yeah. And then everybody saw that and I was like, oh my God, I could have think of that. You catch what made it better for right, me? Right. But if I did come and say, Elaine, you need to do this, 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 then my chance of beating you. Well, it's still high. <laughs> it's yeah. getting slimmer. <laughs> you get it. You well, get I, it. I, I understand kind of what you're saying. Yeah. You're saying if the judge leaves it vague, you're going to use your, your thinking to, to improve right. it. But if if the judge says, I'm making this this specific, they have to give you some way, just like the uh, the different colors on the, like the down ramps or whatever the heck you play in. Contact, contact zones. zones. Contact zones. <laughs> mm -hmm. If if it was if there was no painted line on that and it was different for every judge, if sometimes it was two feet from the end or three and a half or six feet for this judge, and you trained, it, it say it wasn't defined. So it's probably a poor argument because it's subjective yeah. based on what the judge sees. So here's here's my deal: is <laughs> subjectiveness is okay when we have two hundred members, when we have three hundred members. But in IDPA, um, I remember starting when there was 30 members nationally. Last year they had, I think, like 11,000 people at, you know, shooting at regionals and nationals. And when there's a million dollars on the line, subjectiveness is yep, yep. hard. But let me tell you one of my experience. I was um, up against uh, Margaret. Margaret, she's, she's a judge from Belgium. And I did, I did a whatever scenario, and it's over. And then she said something. And I was like, what? I thought she was talking to me. Oh, and she's it. like, Shh. I lose Smoke. points right away. I'm like, oh my God, sorry. Damn. Yeah. You but that's what the I'm saying? I'll bet you never talked again on the field. Yeah, but I thought she said right? something to yeah. me. So you catch what I'm saying? I yes. could have an argument all day. <laughs> well, here's, here's a good example of kind of what I'm talking Live about. Live and learn, you know. Um, I was watching... <laughs> Another, this is totally unrelated, yeah. but I was watching something and they said, stand here and shoot basketballs. And there was someone like a lane size yeah. and there was, they were shooting balls and then Shaq come out at the same distance <laughs> with, and he stood behind the chair, but he could just put the ball in it. Yeah. So if someone says stand at arm's length from the table and Shaq seven feet away with his arms and then now you have to hit him from the other side of the table, mm -hmm. they needed to find a location on the table or on the ground. I mean, I understand. I, I get your argument. So one more thing again. If you train in positions on this table here, and I'm training on the floor, and then we go into a uh, competition, and then say, hey, we can do positions on the table. Is it the advantage to you or advantage to me? You have the advantage because you've been training it. That's why Shaq came out and he did this. But I, and I didn't have the advantage, and this is me being a lane. I think in this <laughs> instance, we're talking about Ouch. two different things. <laughs> no, we just talking about size, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, the differences. Yeah, so. well, I think... Oh, let's I not go there either. <laughs> I think to some degree, we're oh, talking shit. about two Long different gone. things. We're Long talking gone. about the logistics of a trial and making it consistent mm -hmm. versus... I understand the gaming aspect yeah, of things, it. How can, I, how can I make things more... A, you know, more advantageous for myself and my dog, but the consistency between is is where so you, I we, see we, some it's big very difficult though because yeah. every deal. time every time a dog comes on the field that's a different dog, mm -hmm. it's a whole different thing. I mean, I know it when you're when you're shooting I, that you're talking about. I understand that where you're going from, but it's shooting. Everybody has a gun. It's the same target. It's not that much of a variable. But we have tons more variables with dogs because dog could say i really don't want to stay with you today mm -hmm. i want to go over here mm -hmm. or it's I, only difficult. I think i'm gonna push against you today and just i'm gonna move you over here mm -hmm. and i'm not ready for that because i'm not used to that because my dog's never done it before or whatever because they do mm -hmm. crazy things in the trial they've never done before mm -hmm. because they're dogs because they're dogs but 
your your weapon doesn't do that. I mean, it might misfire, but it doesn't take you, you know, around the corner. It doesn't push it doesn't you have to the a side. mood. It, it doesn't get up and go shot, shoot somebody yeah, by itself, it, it, did it? It changes. So it's not. It's not yeah, like there's it's so not many a, variables. I think it's difficult. I think it's more difficult because we don't have as much information to draw from. Yes. If we if we every time we encounter a new issue, we're going to have to find a way to make it more consistent. Mm-hmm. You know, and and more uh, more uh, less of a judgment call. Well, and the other thing is, we we have very limited in judges. So if we had a larger judge pool with more judges' education, like in anything, not just Mondia Ring, I mean, we're required. I'm a judge in a lot of venues, mm-hmm. and I'm required to keep CEUs. Okay, and we're talking about that in Mondia Ring as well. But the bigger the sport gets the more judges you're going to want and the more consistency you're going to want to see because that's the name of yeah. the game. But that also comes with, hey, you better have some education to show that. And at, at this point, because we're small, that doesn't always happen. Yeah. So well, it, I'm it's just, difficult. I'm just setting up the narrative to the, to the point to where um, if we... I would rather the sport be proactive than yeah. reactive. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that I'm makes saying. sense. Because what about if next year at Nationals... Some dog food company said winter gets free dog food for a year. People are going to start doing acting a little screwy. You know, mm-hmm. they're going. You're going to start seeing people do different things because potentially a club, potentially a club right now could <clears throat> certify a judge, certify do two decoys and hold a trial and say no videoing, no access unless you're there for the for the event, and say they held a trial and no dog ever step on the field that day. There's nothing in the sport to protect itself to that extent right now. Well, I think what Kevin was saying, which I do agree with you, and, and it's the, if you want to be competitive, um, he ha- he knows a lot and he's watched a lot. And, you know, if you're starting or you don't do this that often, you don't have the experience. But on the field, you get experience because I'll remember that yeah. next time. Exactly. You yeah. know, and that's the thing that makes Mondial really of interest to a lot of people is this veritability because it really requires you to think of how you're going to do those exercises and take advantage of any opportunity. But, you know, and the more experience the person has and the better trainer, they thought of all these things. Yes. And then some of us are like, oh, I never thought of that. Oh, <laughs> you know? I, I remember. Yeah. The more experience you get, the more, just like just like if we were going to go to a shooting competition, you, you would whoop my butt, really. But if you came to an obedience competition it might or a rally competition... Yeah. It's the other way around because we have more experience in those venues. And Mondia Ring is difficult. It's f- so much fun, but it requires a dedication a and a lot of yeah. a, a lot, lot of thinking. And, and, and yeah, I can only imagine what it's like trying to keep track of mm. like a escort point deductions. Yeah. I mean, oh, gosh, your brain is just like a. I'd, you'd have to almost have an abacus and. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just say like like I just tell people uh, training pit years. So imagine if I open, let's just say extra. I have him for like eight nine months. If I open his head and I can see how many pit years he have, what the album is, there will not be enough room for me to, on the table for me right. to put his album. Yeah. So it's all about showing the dog all these different pit years that we may conquer on right. the day we trial in. You know. So I never say, oh, I didn't do that. I was like, oh, what can I do? Okay, let me see what Karen and them doing. Oh, I never saw that before. I need to show my dog that right. picture. Right. You, you yeah, know? just like you talked to Brad today when working. Hey, Joe, um, how he kind of walked in at an angle and kicked his foot. You said, you know, I might not have never thought of doing. Never that. thought of doing yeah. that. So that. That's a new picture for yeah. him. You know, yeah. um, th- thank you, Brad. But that's for that. why it take. That's why I think people like the sport and pursue it because it's complicated. Yeah. So, so it's, when I was young too, you know, and I'm cutting you. When I was young and I compete. People say, oh, my, my dog didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know you can do that. But, but we need to show them more stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, if, if I didn't know, and, and show it to him. You know, just like, like we say with Brad, you know, he come out there and he step out and I was like, damn, I would have never do that. I, I, He's he going to step out and then your dog like, I never saw this picture before. Right. And it was nothing really different is the way he moved. Maybe right. one left foot was moving too much. Like, yeah. oh, my God. So we need to think about the albums in the dog head. I'm like, whoa, so many pictures, you know. And so as a new competitor, what attracted me about the sport was the problem-solving aspect, Mm -hmm. both for the dog and for the handler. So in agility, there's problem-solving. You have a course map. You have to go out there, work your strategy. What's your skill set? What's your dog's skill set to communicate through a course? It's different in Mondia Ring. 
but the dog has to generalize and figure things out and the handler needs to generalize and figure things out. So that's the interest and that's what sucked me into it is the brain game. Yeah, and I know um, when I was first competing, I made the mistake of literally walking up to Decoy and having to turn away from him. Which direction you turn is important Mm -hmm. because one's going to help point your dog more if the hits come in there or it's going to help point the dog less to his position because it's going to come somewhere else and all of those things. And that was one of my biggest draws in becoming a decoy because it forced me to understand those sides of the rules to the point to where I could pass the certification, which is why I'm going to go audit the decoy camp. (laughs) Yeah, Mm -hmm. that'll be, and plus everyone's dog's going to get worked a whole bunch. That'll be good. It's yeah. good. It's good for the decoys and the dogs to see a lot of new decoys, a lot of new people, new places, new scenarios. Yeah, you know. And I'm and going to work on a set of videos here pretty soon that um, I'm going to edit the beginning stages of it and pitch it to the board and see what they think. Um, some really good educational videos because I have the equipment to give uh, different views that most people have never seen Mondo Ring from, um, and. Like just learning the horns is like a four seminar. <laughs> yes. yeah. I still just, don't know it. Just learning the horns is like a four seminar. You have two uh, different people telling you when to do the horn. Yeah, it's like holy god. And then uh, one of my biggest things, like, so I, I'm real. I study a lot and I watch. And my first few deals, and would honk the horn, and someone would step backwards. I'm like, what? <laughs> I I thought we we're supposed to go forward, but it, when you understanding what's training and what's trial. Also, is such a big deal. I mean, it took me easily three seminars just to begin to understand when to push the little black bulb on the back of the horn. Well, even Brad today just randomly hit the horn. Yeah. yeah. So the dog isn't queuing off the horn. Queuing right. off the horn, yeah. Thank goodness for that since we had a defensive handler that had horns in it. Yeah. yeah. That but, was awesome. So all I don't know. I'd like to see the legality of what I did to Brad um, with giving him two sticks and me keeping one of those little garden sticks yeah. and kind of waving it like a baton. Because if that that would cue the dog in so much because seeing that same picture from the face yeah. attack so much. Uh, see if that's legal. And, and like everyone can agree that Monty Ring is so variable. Um, mm-hmm. As soon as you think you've seen everything, mm-hmm. last year's nationals, cops and robbers. Oh, my I never God. even would have thought about training gunfire on a de- long stay. That was you know? that was crazy, <laughs> and but challenging. But we train it now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so same again. If you, you know you train it and I didn't train it, the advantage goes to you. You know. Yeah. So see the pitiers and train your dog. You know. And I like I like the changes. That's what get me into mm-hmm. it. I, I love the changes. There's nothing's really the same. I got to think. My dog got to think. You know. And for me, what make it easy for my dog is, or I think easy anyway, because if I tell him to sit, I expect him to sit. I don't expect him to see the butterflies and the birds and the decoy. I ask him to sit. That's what makes it easy. The black and white for me. Yeah. Well, we all strive for sit <laughs> means sit, stay means stay, bite <laughs> means bite, regardless what the decoy has in his hands. Yeah. We all strive for that, but whatever we we try, <laughs> we try to make make those expectations true, but it's just not possible on every event. I mean, we all of our dogs have I- issues. I mean, I tra- taught a lazy retrieve, and every trial I've ever been in, I threw it and just <laughs> said, it, "Jesus, take the wheel." And amen. Every time so it far, was, it was your first dog, so you yeah. get a little yeah. pass. Every on time, some of that. every and time, your next in a trial. dog will be different. Yes. It's the yeah. problem. It, yeah. it will That's retrieve well not and not looking. do something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we all have issues that we work through, and as the as the Mondio family grows, uh, I'm really looking forward to. I met so many people like Elaine. You meet someone, and then she says. Yeah, just come stay at my guest house. Yeah. I could be an axe murderer, is all she knows. <laughs> That's <laughs> you know? okay. the beard. But he's part of the family now. He's part of the family now, so yeah. he won't yeah. hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Elaine's I'll good, man. You. I'm happy to, to see Elaine too. every time. She's a big supporter, guys. Mondia Ring. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many years it's going to be on. But you guys gotta check out Elaine. She's she's really really oh, for sweet. For heaven's sakes, no, oh, she's sweet. <laughs> a lot of decoys know Elaine. You know she travels far and wide. She's she, awesome. She's, yeah, she's awesome. Man. She came the first time with her travel trailer and pulled up and like camped yeah. out. And I was like, this lady's really cool. <laughs> well, I'm I'm yes. so surprised at how far people travel, um, because if you look at uh, numbers, a trial never hardly pays for itself, mm. especially just looking at club at local club members. But you'll see. 
four, five, six people. I know when I went to Ann's down there, there was yeah. me that drove six hours, and then the people from Colorado, yep. all over the place. It's insanity yeah. how far these people drive. I can only imagine this rally crazy people. How far <laughs> y'all drive? Uh, we regularly go to Canada to train oh. agility. Oh, so. my oh. God. Mm, I, I'm, no way. No way. That's regularly. That regularly. Yeah. That's a whole nother step. <laughs> That's the 12 steps to agility. That's a different one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, well, I hope, uh, well, what I was saying a while ago is I hope to be able to put together some videos that helps the edu- the learning curve a little bit. Just like sit down and watch a video that's eight minutes long and yeah. learn your horns. Yeah. Like it's pretty simple. Uh, not watching that. Just any <laughs> any exercise that you leave your dog, you're not going to give a second horn. Any exercise yeah. that you send your dog away from you, you will get a second so horn it, on that. It, it, Just something like yeah. that that mm-hmm. takes so much so much time in a seminar or it, hanging out with a club to learn could be told to you in like thirty seconds. You still have to do it though because it's yeah, a yeah, different yeah. when you hear it and then you go do it because uh, you, you hear the horn and you go what what was I supposed to do yeah what what, what was that so, and so, then once yeah. you do it and you repeat it just the same as anything else yeah. this is a sport that you have to do. And you have to take part of, and it's the same thing. Anything like that, the more you practice it, the better you get. So now they're second nature. So I hear the first horn, I go, okay, I got stuck X, Y, Z stuff. So I wait, I hear the second horn, and we're going. But it's not like that the first time. And I'm sure you're still going, what was that horn for? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The but it, horn, the more horn you horn do, and then your first trial that you get in, and you're going, oh, my God, the horn. The horn. Oh, I remember my first trial. I remember <laughs> walking through the gate. <laughs> taking It'll my okay. collar off my dog and go, all right, he's about to run away. <laughs> he's about to run away. He's going to run. And he didn't run. And I remember walking out and Ann was the, I think Ann was the judge. No, Dave was Don. The, Don was. Don. Oh, Don, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Don was. And I remember walking out to Don and I, he kind of made me face away from my dog. I was like, oh, he's about to come lick me. He's about to come lick me. And he didn't. And I turned around and then it's just a blur. I remember trying to tell myself to breathe and getting lightheaded because I think I was breathing too fast. And then... <laughs> or the, not at all. The dog, run away from me. Toot! And the dog, run back to me. And I'm like, my dog's still here. Okay, good, good. And <laughs> walk in between exercises like, stay with me, bud. Stay with me. We have video. Yeah. And then I literally, I never get like that. But that experience right there was something I do not experience very often. Because... When you take the collar off, all bets are off. I mean, you yeah. you step on the field and most mostly friends are there watching, some strangers, and you just don't want to look like a doofus. But it <laughs> when you take that collar and leash off, you just go, okay, there's no more lifeline. Here we go. Yeah. And there have been dogs that go, Vroom, and they're gone, and they run the field, and they have a grand old time, and we all laugh, and they take them off the field, and it's another day and another dollar, right? But yeah. I'm glad Tegan won't be the first. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it, oh, yeah. And it, and she yeah. won't be the first on my field because it's already happened several times. Well, <laughs> With I, a tub in her mouth. Yeah. I have seen a dog walk up to the trial field, collar come off, the dog run to a tree, pee on the tree, and just take off on the yep. trial field, oh, and, yeah. the, and the judge just say, get your dog, you're dismissed. You know, and I'm like, I'm just waiting for that to happen to me one day. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I want to thank everyone that come sat down. We had a long day, and it's starting to get a little hot here in Texas, but it's not too bad yet. Um, and we're starting again tomorrow. Elaine, come all the way from Colorado mm-hmm. through the winds, oh, yeah. the killer winds that was flipping semis over, uh, and yes. then uh, we were just wet. So other than that, it's not too bad. But we got a third day tomorrow. We're starting a little bit earlier uh, to work these dogs a little bit more. And uh, I think I've thanked everybody already, but I want to thank everybody for taking this, especially all the sleepy heads over there that are it's outside. nice and toasty, <laughs> warm, and she's it's passed so nice out over Outside there. the camera, yeah. So this was the first, first episode of what I hope that eventually I'll be welcomed at trials. I had a little bit of kickback from the last one I tried to attend. But I, I eventually want to be able to travel to trials that I'm decoying at or, or trialing and sat down with the judge and the decoys and one of the main competitors or the club owner and have these conversations about training there on their field, well, how you prepared for the trial that's coming up, talk to the judge and you know how they're going to set the field up or whatever the case, and just let people start to see faces. Because if someone's never met Kevin before, this is a good opportunity, especially his interview, to for people to go, he says three funny. 
<laughs> he does. He's he's not too ugly. Not too much. So maybe we'll bring him out because there's people around the all around the country I've never seen before. Yes, yes. And it's an easy way for someone to click on a video and watch something on this. But um, I hope everyone enjoyed that watched this video. It's a and lot of fun. Yeah, it, it wasn't is. nearly as horrible as I was expecting. See, we told you. Yeah. Yeah. It was horrible. <laughs> you get comfortable. No. You should you should see it when there's like sixty beers involved. It gets oh, a little yeah. wild then. Yeah. I'm not allowed to be videoed <laughs> then. I like my job. Yeah. We'll wait. Okay. Never mind. Well, it's <laughs> another long day of training, so we're gonna have to wrap it up because we all have got to get up early again tomorrow and work. So again, thank everyone for coming uh, this evening, driving all the way out here in the boonies and. Uh,